Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. We're talking about bees and beekeeping. And this must certainly be one of the most green of all green businesses and jobs on planet Earth. Something that's important since the beginning of time. And bees evolved on the planet to take care of literally all other living beings, including humans. We have Kimberly Mahalik. She is the president of the Maryland State Beekeepers Association. And we're going to talk about supporting beekeepers uh, through education, mentoring, and outreach. And Kim, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thank you very much. Looking at the association that you have, the Maryland State Beekeepers Association, why is it so important to have such a support network for beekeepers? The MSBA uh, allows us to ensure that we can get successful beekeeping best practices Mm -hmm. to the members of our state as fast as possible. And that allows us to support them and to help them be successful. Mm -hmm. And that's important. Now, looking at this, this older photograph, this uh, goes back in time. I know you've had an affiliation with the University of Maryland, which is the uh, Cooperative Extension for Maryland and the Land Grant University of Maryland. Uh, tell us a little bit of the history behind that going back to its very origin and why that is important to the beekeepers. The association was founded in 1908 at, the, uh, at a location at the University of Maryland. Um, it started with approximately 100 beekeepers. Mm -hmm. We're now up to 1,000 uh, registered beekeepers or members of our club. The picture that you're looking at right now are the original founders from that meeting. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And you'll notice they're men. It's a nice manly shot of very important looking men who were beekeepers at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And that's it's very important. For the, yeah, very important for the community. But at the same time, you really reached out and great diversity among the members that you have uh, in all uh, different manners. Uh, but looking at the beekeepers, uh, they come from many different backgrounds. Uh, why such diversity as far as backgrounds? But the common thread, of course, is beekeeping. The beekeepers that we have now range in age from teenagers all the way through into their 90s. And the ease of being able to handle hives, you can have one or two hives in your backyard. That used to be typical. It's starting to happen again with smaller beekeepers. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a lot more women and men in a more equal number in the state of Maryland in particular. The shot you're looking at is a group of us that were at a Eastern Apiculture Society meeting mm -hmm. that were from the state of Maryland, and that's our state t-shirt, the yellow one. Right. Now, I'm not sure exactly what this is. I, I have an idea, <laughs> that is... but, but you're looking at many different ways of supporting the beekeepers. And so we're going to go through some this of is... these different ways of doing that. Absolutely. This is new technology. This is the use of an infrared camera to look at a beehive during the winter to see that it's alive. The bright spot that you see in the center of the box means that's the cluster of honeybees cuddled together for warmth um, and generating heat around the queen during the middle of the winter heat, the winter cold, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So it's new technology. This is an outreach picture. This shows a booth that you would find at a, at a fair or at a 
um, community festival talking about beekeeping and we outreach to our communities to talk about what beekeepers can do and the ways that you can help the honeybee and other pollinators in the state. Now looking at the, the center note of this honey, that seems to really attract a lot of people. And I guess that's a good recruitment tool as far as getting new members. So how does honey really relate to the public and how do they feel about honey? Is this something that's universal? It's very warm. How does this all work? Most people look at honey as being the greatest thing from the bee keep, from the honey bee. Um, it is the only insect that makes food for humans, and the food is absolutely delicious mm -hmm. and comes in many forms. Yeah. Um, so, if you'll see here, this is a shot from a honey bee show, a honey show, excuse me, for beekeepers. Um, and it's mead, it's different flavors of honey, it's creamed honey, it's uh, straight liquid honey, and the liquid honey goes in a variety of colors. The back corner display is from light yellow through black, each color being a different nectar source. But that's all honey produced in that state. Now, we having also the, of, uh, the seminars, why are seminars so important for your beekeepers? For new beekeepers, one of the most important ways to be successful is to take a short course to introduce you to beekeeping. Beekeeping isn't something that's um, there are a lot of complicating issues with beekeeping and we want to make sure you're successful. You take the short course and more importantly, you find out about the community that's available to help you. Mm -hmm. So this is a short course being taught by David uh, Clark, mm -hmm. teaching these people who are potentially new beekeepers. I see. So you're actually uh, recruiting people on a constant basis to come in and really look at the idea of being beekeepers then. Now this is, I thought, a very interesting uh, photograph. What are we looking at here and why is this up close and personal relationship with bees and honey so important? This shot is a group of brand new beekeepers who've just finished their short course uh, looking and going through a hive for the first time with an experienced beekeeper. So for many of them it's the first time they've actually put on their gear and approached a hive with 50,000 stinging insects in it. <laughs> so they're learning how to look at the comb. They're learning how to uh, find out who's on it and, and what's there. Mm -hmm. So it's you have to have a certain amount of hands-on experience. And this is one way of getting it at a field day after a short course. Yeah, I, I think this is absolutely a wonderful photograph. And it shows you just how personal it becomes between human and bee. I'm going to use singular for both of that so that you actually are really developing a relationship with that hive and almost possibly with the, the queen herself. Now, these are other uh, activities and ways that people can come involved. And looking at this as a small business, are there other businesses related to beekeeping and people actually don't even have bees? For the most part, even if they have a small business on the side, they are beekeepers also. Mm -hmm. The picture you're looking at is building woodenware, so it's building a bee box. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we teach our new beekeepers is how to build the equipment properly and where you get your equipment from. Sometimes it's from actual wood shops mm -hmm. and they, they may not be beekeepers, but for the most part they are because they know what we're looking for and what we need. I see. Okay. So it's very important uh, that they learn every aspect as far as the uh, beekeeping is, is concerned. Now, looking at these different hives, I notice that you have uh, some of these stacked. So what are we looking at here and what is the activity going on around the bees themselves? The bees are um, basically acting the way they're supposed to. They're going out, finding food and bringing it back into their boxes. You're looking at different kinds of boxes because they're different kinds of hives. The um, burnt orange small boxes on the top are what are called splits, which means that we're making brand new queens out of those boxes. Mm -hmm. So they have a brand new queen and it's just developing as a colony right now. So it's small and it will be built up over the summer. And as it builds up, it'll move from a smaller box to a medium sized box to a larger box mm -hmm. with time. So it's, this is a healthy apiary of a beekeeper. Mm -hmm. Now looking at the, the small box, the orange, how do you identify the 
the queen and how do you get her to move into this box? Um, you identify the queen because you learn how to tell her differently from the other bees. She mm -hmm. moves different, she looks different. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually move her on a frame into that box along with the proper number of attendants. So worker bees. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a mixture of bees in order to start a small colony. This is called a nucleus colony. Mm -hmm. It will eventually grow to be a bigger colony. Yeah. Uh, um, remember the queen bee lays two, 15 to 2,000 eggs a day. Mm -hmm. She can make a lot of bees. Yeah. And that is a lot of collection as far as feeding that, that particular colony. This is a great yes. photograph. So what are we seeing here? Uh, what is the dynamic? of this uh, photograph and are these experienced are these uh, new beekeepers and uh, either what do they already know or what are they learning about taking care of the bees the person on the right is the experienced beekeeper mm -hmm. the person on the left is the new beekeeper and this is part of a mentoring activity and to mentor a new beekeeper you take them through your hives and you show them and allow them to show you what they've learned Going through a beehive is very relaxing. It's done in a very calm way. Mm -hmm. And this is a very calm picture of a calm activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just really amazing, Kim, that you have people, as you said, there's thousands of uh, stinging uh, insects and all this. Uh, yet at the same time, everything is calm. And I've been to some of these. Uh, it's quite gentle. And so in approaching the bees, how do you keep them calm? So uh, they allow you to do all this activity around their home, their queen, and also with their food. It is important that the beekeeper establish how calm it is going into a hive. No rapid movements. You don't bang things. You don't shake things up. And for the most part, honeybees are not aggressive. They defend themselves, they descend, defend their food, but they are not aggressive creatures. Mm -hmm. And you just slowly move and you slowly do what you need to do when you're in the hive. Mm -hmm. And this is during a happy time of the year. There's a lot of nectar sources out. You can see new things in bloom. Mm -hmm. And so the bees are just busy collecting as much food as they possibly can during a time of good, plentiful forage. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is a great photograph. This is uh, the end of the day. So tell us a little bit about this end of the day and how much you be feeling when you're having this interaction with all these bees. Okay, um, this picture are the mentees that I had uh, this year, actually. Um, they had just finished pulling all of the honey supers off of the hives. And um, it is a wonderful shot of just the happiness that they have. They, they've had a great experience going through the hives that day, and it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And it is um, very enjoyable to be around people who also enjoy the honeybees. Mm -hmm. But I, I just think this is such a pristine uh, shot. It's almost like the higher being is beaming down on you and uh, allowing you to interact in nature this way. So this is the last question. It's about 20 seconds. How does it really feel to have this intimate relationship with the bees and allowing nature to continue its cycle? There's a sense of awe and wonder every time you open up a box, the smells, the scents, the sounds, mm -hmm. and you're amazed at the beauty of this creature and what it can do for you and what you can do for it. It's just, it's magic. Yeah, and I think having a cadre like this, people that you're really becoming close to and good friends with, uh, is the same sensation, the same feeling you have for the other humans, just as you have for the bees. Uh, thank you, this is Kimberly Mahalik. She's president of the Maryland State Beekeepers Association. Thank you as we continue to create the Emerald Planet.